The Data Cloud Diaries, querying data from Data Lake Objects DLOs through the REST API. Hello, welcome to another episode on the Steve Tech Arc channel. Each day I try to find some interesting thought that I can share with you. And as I was building the um, Data Cloud Diaries, focusing on Data Cloud, I had loaded a couple of files and I wanted to see their contents. So I could look in through the Data Explorer, but then I'm like, I'd love to see it through the API. So in digging into that, I found an interesting thought that I wanted to share with you. So you have loaded data using Data Cloud and you set up your data stream and the data stream has fed the, da the data into these objects called data lake objects, DLOs. And these are representations of the external data as they come in before they're mapped into the actual objects you're gonna tap into. So these DLOs, you wanna take a look at them and see what's inside them. There's actually two different API interfaces to getting in. And I'm gonna walk through why you would need either one. And so we're gonna dive in, take a look at how we can see data lake objects through Postman coming in externally through the APIs. So first we're looking at data cloud and there's an interesting capability called a data space. And a data space allows you to segment your sources and all of your elements so that way you could run two separate or three or four or five separate groups of data. So I had created, there's the default data space and I had created one called Steve Tech Arc. And that actually threw me in a curveball when going to the APIs. So it's gonna be an interesting lesson. You also have your data streams and I have some sample data streams. The two I did in a previous talk was loading the our airport's airport and the our airport runway. And what happens is your data lake objects are created. These are target representations of the source data. So here's my data stream. Here's OA airport. And I can see the fields of the original um, data coming in. And then you map it to a data lake object. And here is a DLO. And here is my OA data. And here's OA airport. So this is a DLO which contains the data, data lake object con contains the data that's in there and it shows me the field level structures. So you can do some mappings, which we were gonna, we're gonna talk about today, but I thought the API was more interesting. We'll get into the actual mappings and things in a subsequent session. But you can use Data Explorer. You can pick your data source. So pick data space, select DLO, data lake object, we also have DMOs, data model objects, and then we have the calculated insights. Today, we're gonna to look at the data lake objects. We're gonna choose the OA airport. And the neat thing about the Explorer is it allows you to view your data, but within certain limitations. So first, you only get two columns. I mean, 10 columns, one, and you get to change the columns anytime you like. So if I choose, you know, get rid of the subversion and the data source and the data source object, I could put in little things like the name of the airport and longitude and latitude. So now I go save. And so now I get to see the Latin long and the name of the airport. This, But I only get to see the first hundred records. So you'd have to filter your data to always show you the first hundred, whatever hundred records you want. However, I had you know, research that you can get to more data coming in through the API. So I decided I wanted to get to that data. So my question is gonna be, how do I get to this data through the API? So the first step is coming into my Postman, which I've shown in many previous videos and we'll show on many more. And here, I'm gonna go login.salesforce.com slash services OAuth2, hit the endpoint, I'm actually doing a username and password grant type, and I had to enable that because by default, username and password grants are disabled. So for those in details, the OAuth username and password flows are no longer fully secure. They, Salesforce recommends. I went and turned it back on just for this case. Normally we could set up a little more time and do it to the proper device flow or any of the other flows, but just for simplicity, I turned on username and password, be aware that you know you're using the proper OAuth flow. This should all be covered in other videos. But now we're back to here. I'm gonna set up the OAuth flow 
and hit send. So now I have just authenticated into the Salesforce org that has that is the host for my data cloud. Then what I do is you take your access token right here, and it's actually giving you your instance URL. And I can go and I research that there is an SSOT on metadata query where I can hit and query. So I'm going to go to the authorization header. You see me do this many times, paste in the bearer token, and I'm just going to query the metadata. And so now I am successfully querying metadata against my data cloud Salesforce org. So this is giving me metadata queries, telling me data. And then I decided I wanted to actually hit a connect API. So there is another URL, SSOT query v2. They recommend you now use the v2 query. And I just go to my headers, go to my authorization, paste this here and hit send. And now what I have is I actually decided to query a different um, object. And I'm going to show you why, why it's working. I'm going to show you why it doesn't work for my data. So first, if we go to Data Explorer and we go to the default data space and we go to a DLO and we choose the contact DLO. So now this is the co a contact object that I mapped through the data stream coming from Salesforce. I'm going to edit the columns. I'm going to take away some of these other columns I don't care about. But what I am going to do is put full name. Hit done. So I got lots of good data here. And this is in the default um, data space. So using the default data space, I can run a SQL command, not a SQL command, a SQL command. So here I run my SQL command, select name from the contact, limit 100. And lo and behold, there's my data. And in fact, I can go back to this contact through my data streams and look at it. And I have, a hundred. there's 101 records. So I have the ability to query and I'm not limited to 100. This actually will return a lot more records. So this is a way to run data against the, your data lake object, DLOs. So that seems great. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this and we'll just rename this query v2. And then we'll go to airport. And so then what I proceeded to do is to go look at my OA airport data stream, or actually you go to the DLO, go to the airport, grab its name. So here is its name and get a column. So we're going to look at name underscore C. So we're going to go into this new one, go to the body, and there is my JSON. And we're going to paste that there. And this will make, make sure it matches with name underscore C. So I should be, all I'm doing is switching to a different data lake object and running a query. Now, what we now see is an interesting error, which is entity, Air, OA airport entity not in scope of the default namespace. So turns out that there are significant ramifications of separating your data. And what you have here is when I had this data lake objects and I went and put them into my, um, where is it, uh, data spaces. So here's my data spaces. The moment I went and put these two tables, OA airport and OA runway, when I created the data streams, I put them in a separate compartment that requires special access. So first, you needed to have a special um, permission set to access the data. So when I created the data space, it created a permission set with the exact name, and then I had to add my users into it. So we're gonna lock it carefully inside of Salesforce by requiring a permission set. And now there's a different way of locking the data through the API. So what I found was that I could not use the Salesforce Connect URL in order to get to that data. So what we need to do is we need to do what's called a direct URL to the data cloud instance. So let's take a look at that. So we're gonna walk through this carefully, how to get a direct API and run the query. 
First, we're gonna authenticate again. So now we have this access token. Now there is a second endpoint you hit called the exchange for the data cloud and token. So you make a separate hit um, to do it. So what you're gonna do is it's gonna be service, it's gonna be your custom endpoint with services A360 token. So this is called a token exchange. You have the grant type, subject type, subject type, and here you can designate the data space. So here I'm gonna paste in my, so four different settings. One is the grant type of CDP. Two is the subject token, which is your actual um, token you got from your instance. Three is the subject type where you're gonna get an access token. And then four, this is an optional parameter to let you designate the data space. And I'm gonna hit send. So now look at my access token, it's a lot bigger. And you'll notice my instance URL. And my instance URL looks a little, a little different. When I authenticated up here, it had HTTPS. But when I come down here, it's not. So what I'm gonna do is take this inst access token and no, first step is to grab your instance URL and you're gonna to go to what's called a direct query. And here you'll see it's a much simpler query. It gives you that direct URL. And then now I go to API v2 query. And then, but in its header, I have that bearer. So I go to my exchange and get my new token, my beefy, really large, which I can see is a JWT token. You could see it right here, it's a JWT. And I put that in my header, bearer token. All right, now I have a query. And let's take a look at this query. Select ID and then the EDA code. And what I'm doing is I'm going to OA airport. And so I went to a data lake object, my OA airport, and I studied it. And I can see that I wanted the EDA code for the airport. There's my EDA code. Um, I also wanted to get, I'm grabbing the continent and the ID, and the ID is IDC, underscore C. So from here, I hit send, and now I am getting data from the data lake, and you'll see I'm getting far more than a limit of 100. Let's say, oh, that's a limit of 100. So let's see what happens if we don't limit. So right now we're hitting it about 501 is our line number. Let's go to 200. And what's now happening is we're gonna have batches of data. So I can run large qu queries that can return large rows. And what I then do is I can request it with subsequent queries. And we'll be walking through this in a later, in a subsequent session, where we're gonna walk through how to page through the data. The reason I don't wanna do that is I wanted to stay this one focused on the connection. So what we have now is the ability, we authenticate and we can go direct and we can get to the default space. And we can get, but we can't go to any um, one inside the, what, that, that special data space. And to go to the special data space, you've gotta authenticate. You then have to do an exchange for the token and then hit the direct endpoint and hit the other URLs. So right here, here is, a, here is some connect rest, here is the data query V2, and you'll see this is the direct connect query. This is the one where I, my first attempt, because you'll see the SSOT query, and you'll notice that right up here, SSOT query. But now if you go direct, you do the slightly different URL. Notice it says API v2 query. So this is the direct query. So we're going direct versus through connect. And you'll see that in the help. In the direct query, which requires the exchange, then I have the authorization token and I can run my SQL. And then I'll, we'll be walking through the whole next batch and querying and going through there. So it looks like all you gotta do is do your query and you're with a get and your next batch ID. So let's take a look at that. So 
We're right here. We're going to duplicate. We're going to change it to a get. We're going to grab the results of the previous one. So here we go, query v2. I'm trying some, there is my query next batch ID. So according to the help text, what I should be able to do. So what I've done is I've duplicated the query URL. I've added the next result set to the end of the URL. And then what I did is I made sure I sent nobody and now I'm getting the next page of data. So you'll see that with subsequent calls and I can see if I need to do whether the query is done and so the answer is true. So because it's true, I don't need to query again. So this allows me to make queries with larger data sets instead of 200, it could be you know hundreds of thousands of rows. And what I can then do is read whether the it's done or not in the URL, if it was done false, I can grab the next batch. So I now have the ability to query the data in my data lake. So at, we're gonna continue to move forward, diving into data cloud. But what I showed you is how do we get into that through the API? I found how we can go to it direct through the Salesforce Connect and have the V2 API, but then I couldn't get to the data that I put in the data spaces. So then what I did is I learned about the key exchange, the token exchange. And as part of that, the optional parameter for passing in your data space. Then I had the query and now I can run my queries against my data spaces, which will then keep all my queries limited to that data space. And I can now run the queries and even do the pagination through the, the more result sets. We're gonna to continue to keep diving into data cloud and hope this was interesting. Hope you had fun tapping into the lake. Join us again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe to Steve Tech Arc and www.stevetecharc.com and have a great day.